At the beginning of prehistory, during Paleolithic, the process of hominization took place. This process is all the changes, the genetic changes that happened between the first primates and the last human beings. So, the first thing that we need to know is that primates, primates, is a group of mammals and in this group of mammals we have the human beings and we have two another animals like the monkeys, for example, gorillas or shims. This group of primates share a common ancestor. That means that we have an ancestor in common in the origin of our species. But from this common ancestor to the present day, we are going to find several different species, not only of monkeys. We are, have to, uh, we are going to find two different species of humans. These human species were called hominids and they have something in common, all of them. They were and we are bipedals. Bipedals or bipedalism, that means bipedismo, means the ability to walk on the back legs. This is a very important difference that all the hominids shared. From the first one, uh, four millions of years ago, to our species today, the Homo sapiens, the human being in the present, all, we are all bipedals, bipedos. So, if we look at another primate, for example, a gorilla, we are going to see that we have a lot of different, uh, a lot of differences in our body. This difference is, uh, they are the consequences of this process of humanization. So, look at, for example, the spine. The spine is straight, but in a gorilla, the spine is not straight, is an inclined spine. That means that the shape of our skull is going to be different and the same with the shape of our pelvis. For example, thanks to the bipedalism, we have a straight position. This straight position allows this straight spine and a perfect balance skull or head. That means that the head is round and is perfectly in balance on the top of the spine. In a gorilla, because they need use the arms to walk, the spine is inclined. This inclining spine makes that the skull or the head is not balanced and it's impossible to have a round head with this way to connection between the skull and the spine. Because of that, we have a round, round head and a bigger brain volume. That means that we have more space for our brain and our brain is bigger. The gorilla have a little or a small brain cavity and the brain is smaller. So this is going to be directly related with intelligence. Another change, for example, is that because of this position, the quadrupedalism position, that means that they are quadruped, quadrupedals, that means quadrupedos, they have this long and narrow pelvis, and we have this short and wide pelvis. But a very, very important advantage of all of this is that we have a shorter arms, we don't need it to walk, so they are shorter than the legs, and we have free hands, that means that we can walk and take things with our hands, we can bring things, we can uh, take 
weapons and run at the same time, for example. And this is going to be very important because that's the thing that allow us to be hunter, for example, to survive. In our hands, we have another advantage too, but it's something that we share with the, all the primates. The opposable thumb, pulgar oponible. That means that we can grab things with our hands, okay? And this is very important. This is something that only happens in primates. Monkeys and we, uh, the human beings, can grab things because of this opposable thumbs that allow us to make manual tax for example that means that we are going to be able to make tools not only because of the hands but too because we have a big brain volume and a very intelligent brain well another change is very important for example would be the development of the larynx that is going to be related with the communication, the development of language, for example, and the shape of our face. Okay, our face is going to be different. We have a little uh, jaw, mm, not a big one, and we have chin, for example. Our forehead is straight and our face is more plain. Mm? In all of this process, we are going to find a lot of different species of hominization. From the first ancestor to us, here we are, the Homo sapiens, this is where this is our species today. We are going to find several species, most of them, all of them, extinguished today. All the process started four million of years ago and end 300,000 years ago. Mm? So, we are going to uh, explain the most important species to show how was this development or evolution. Look at this one, the Australopithecus afarensis. This was the first human being that we know that was bipedal. We know it because we found a fossil, we, ha we found uh, the rest, the remains of, human, of a human being, a girl that we call uh, her Lucy because of a song. Hmm? This Lucy was a little human being, a little woman, very similar to a chimp, but bipedal. They live this kind of Australopithecus afarensis. They live in an open woodland, that means a savanna, and eat vegetables and some meat, but not too much. The next important species is the Homo habilis. The name came from the ability of making tools. Is the first one able to make tools and we are going to call them the first homo, that means the first human being, because this intelligence, because of this ability to make tools. Then we have the homo erectus, that means hombre erguido. And this is uh, very similar to us, but um, very similar to monkeys too. They learn how to use fire and spread from Africa to Europe and Asia because the Australopithecus, Australopithecus afarensis, the Homo habilis and the Homo erectus appear for the first time in Africa and Homo erectus uh, they will be the first ones to go out and colonize Europe and Asia. Then we have the 
Homo edelbergensis, a very complicated name. This is very important for us in the Iberian Peninsula because we have one of the most important archaeological sites of Homo edelbergensis, Atapuerca. Atapuerca was a very important site. Uh, we have found hundreds of remains of this Homo edelbergensis, and we know that they were the common ancestor to the Homo neanderthalensis, the Neanderthal, and the Homo sapiens. We are these ones. Okay, so this common ancestor is like our grandfather, imagine, and we are like cousins here, okay? The Homo neanderthalensis, or Hombre de Neanderthal, lives in Europe. He or she, this, uh, this human being, appears in Europe uh, 130,000 years ago, approximately, and uh, they were very strong and intelligent. They have a big brain, bigger than us, and they were very intelligent. They were the first ones to bury their dead. And they uh, made complex tools. They were hunters and they lived in little groups. They were our cousins. Hmm? And here we are, the Homo sapiens. The Homo sapiens appeared in Africa, but they spread from Africa to Europe. And in Europe, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, are, they are going to live together at the same time during a long, long period of time. This uh, period of time, almost more um, 15,000 years living together, and at the end, the Homo neanderthalensis disappear and only the Homo sapiens remains. The Homo sapiens, uh, we are the Homo sapiens, we are exactly the same from the first time that we appear in Europe. We are exactly the same. This is very important. The Homo sapiens has not changed, okay? So they were as clever as we are because they were the same that we are. Hmm? Well, the Homo sapiens spread across all the continents, all over the world, and they were responsible for the first art. We are clever at the same way that the Neanderthalensis were, and we survived to the change of the climate, and we are the only human beings that remains from all these species. Okay, only if you want to play and know more about the process of hominization, remember that you can click here. You have this presentation in the library of Hogwarts and you can open a page in which you are going to find a lot of information of different human beings. You can see here the different species and you can go and compare. For example, this is our species, Homo sapiens, and we can, for example, compare that with the Australopithecus. You can see the size, the Homo habilis, for example, the Homo erectus, very similar to us. Hmm? Okay, and the ancestor, for example, and the Neanderthal. Hmm? And that's all.